12,000 years ago in the grasslands of South America lived a very different collection of animals. Some of these, like the Glyptodonts and giant sloths, were doing very well for themselves, becoming the dominant herbivores pretty much everywhere they went. But suddenly, almost in the blink of an eye, them and many other large animals disappeared forever. So what exactly happened? And what were these strange animals that once ruled South America? Well, in this video, we'll go back to the end of the Ice Age and go through every South American animal that has since become extinct. Imagine you are walking across the savannah of modern day Argentina. In the distance, you see what looks like a group of large rocks, but as you get closer, those rocks start to move. What you're actually looking at are glyptodonts, giant relatives of armadillos. These animals really were huge, with the biggest of them weighing up to 2 tons and standing at 1.5 meters tall. The most fascinating part? Some glyptodonts had club tails. These tails may have been used to defend against predators, but their main use was likely for fighting between males to gain mating rights and territories. These animals were truly ancient, with the earliest glyptodon fossils dating back about 38 million years ago. From then, they eventually diversified into a much wider range of species. Although they all played the same role, becoming the essential grazing mammals. But glyptodonts weren't the only extinct relatives of the armadillo in South America. Similar to the glyptodonts were the pampatheres, effectively resembling glyptodonts except for being much smaller and having less armour. And it's no coincidence that all the grazing species became so big, whilst the omnivorous ones stayed relatively small, as roaming an open plain makes you especially vulnerable to predators. So, What's the easiest way to defend yourself? Grow so big that few predators stand a chance. But not being able to run or hide, the Glyptodons took it to the next level, constructing impenetrable defences to defend against animals like saber-toothed cats. Although there is much debate about when people first arrived, evidence suggests that people have lived in southern South America for at least 15,000 years. Humans being the creative species that they are, knew that they couldn't simply throw a spear into the bodies of one of these animals, and so they developed a practice of stunning the animals with a spear to the head, and then flipping them upside down where they were unprotected. This method must have spread like wildfire, and by 12,000 BC, every single glyptodont had been killed. Alongside the glyptodonts, another Xenarthron evolved to an enormous size, becoming the largest animal to roam South America since the dinosaurs. The ground sloths. Now, I've talked about ground sloths before, but just to recap, these creatures weren't just giant versions of today's sloths. In fact, modern sloths evolved separately from their massive ancestors. And when I say massive, I mean it. The largest species weighed in at 4,000 kilograms and stood at the height of an African elephant. Like their very distant relative, they were one of South America's dominant herbivores, although they relied more on browsing than grazing. But how did these animals survive without significant defenses? Dotted across the grassland are huge tunnels that the ground sloths probably dug to raise their young away from the threat of predators. Although they weren't all so big, with some on Caribbean islands shrinking to the size of a cat. Prior to human arrival, over 30 species of ground sloths still roam the earth. But along with much of the megafauna, they disappeared 12,000 years ago. While South America's massive herbivores shaped the land, it was the carnivores that ruled the food chain and they were nothing short of terrifying, especially Arctotherium, a member of the short-faced bears, of which the only living species is the spectacled bear. But unlike its mostly herbivorous cousin, Arctotherium was a true carnivore. One particularly massive individual from northern Argentina is estimated to have stood at between 3.5 and 4.3 meters tall, and possibly weighed up to 2,000 kilograms, although this individual was certainly an exception. But Arctotherium was still a giant, and like most of the larger carnivores, they only managed to cling on for a few thousand years after humans started killing the megafauna. No discussion of South America's extinct carnivores would be complete without mentioning the saber-toothed cats, Smilodon. Originally from North America, these predators crossed into South America during the mid-Pleistocene. Once there, they quickly asserted themselves at the top of the food chain, growing much larger without the competition of other North American predators. South American Smilodons could weigh up to 400 kilograms, about twice the weight of a large tiger. But even the huge Smilodons faced competition, 
mostly from Protocyon, a genus of large canids. Protocyon emerged around 780,000 years ago, well after Smilodon had already established itself on the continent. Whilst much smaller, about the size of a large dog, these canids hunted in packs, allowing them to compete with Smilodon for prey. And then there was the direwolf. Like many of South America's top predators, it evolved in North America before making its way to the south. Dire wolves were only slightly larger than today's grey wolves, but as the megafauna started to disappear, both the grey wolf and the dire wolf switched to smaller prey. The grey wolf was more versatile, and the dire wolf failed to adapt, eventually leading to its extinction. But the dire wolf wasn't the only wolf like South American animal. A species known as Dusky Cyanavis lived across the Pampas and Patagonia. This animal is believed to have been most closely related to the still living maned wolf, although its evolution is poorly understood and remains somewhat of a mystery. This carnivore survived for much longer than the others, with the most recent remains dating to between 400 and 550 years ago, although it might have actually survived for much longer, as during the early 20th century, two species of fox were recorded in Patagonia's far south, one of which was much larger. The reason for its disappearance is unknown, but we do know that they had low genetic diversity, making them vulnerable to other threats. Luckily, however, these wolves crossed over into the Falkland Islands, evolving into the Falkland Island wolf. When Darwin arrived, these wolves were already rare, and he predicted their extinction. These animals being more tame than on the mainland were soon wiped out, with their friendly nature making it much easier for someone to kill them. One more extinct carnivoran was found in South America, the Caribbean monk seal, but since it was only found in the waters of the Caribbean, I will leave it for a future video. It's a common misconception that marsupials are only found in Australia, but they can actually be found across the Americas. In fact, they first evolved in South America, and today three orders exist on the continent. The Microbiotheria, the Shrew Opossums, and the Opossums, who are by far the most numerous of these orders, with 98 members. The one-striped opossum was an extremely rare species by the time it was discovered in 1821, and since then, it has only been seen once in 1899. It could be that the secretive nature of opossums could mean that they're still hiding out there, but 125 years is a long time, and extinction is certainly on the table. Another species, the red-bellied grassile opossum, is certainly extinct. Last seen in 1962, its habitat has since been destroyed. More rodents have disappeared from South America than any other continent, given that it hosts more species than any other, including the world's largest, the capybara, who I bet you didn't know had a much larger relative, creatively known as the giant capybara. Although not a true capybara, they were closely related. The lack of fossils makes it hard to say exactly when these animals disappeared, but it was likely around the same time as the megafauna. Caves, a group of small rodents related to capybaras, can be divided into the mountain and yellowtooth caves. One species of yellowtooth cave only lives on in the fossil record, formerly ranging from the Tandilia Mountains to southern Bolivia, a region that caves no longer inhabit. Some of their remains from 950 AD show clear signs of human activity, suggesting that human hunting at least contributed to their extinction. Further west, the only known extinct Tuco Tuco dates back to as early as 5000 BC with the latest remains around 1600 AD. Three spiny mice also disappeared at this time, as well as a close relative of the mountain Viscacha rat, a species of crimson-nosed rat, a brucey, and an ossicudo. These other rodents likely disappeared after the keystone species went extinct, thus altering their natural habitats. Many other extinct South American rodents are not known from fossils, but from actual historical accounts. In 1503, explorer Amerigo Vespucci recorded seeing giant rats on an island. The island was not named, and the record was largely ignored until 1973, when fossils of giant rats were found on an island off the shore of Brazil. By then, these rats were gone, probably due to invasive rodents introduced by explorers like Vespucci. Down to Argentina yet again, the fossorial giant rat could still cling on, but is presumed to be extinct after not having been seen since 1896, the only time it was ever seen, although four of its fossils have been found. The Candango mouse was last seen in 1960, the same year its habitat was destroyed for Brazil's new capital. On the other side of the continent, Zuniga's dark rice rat hasn't been seen since 1949, after all of its habitat was destroyed by goats. 
the Galapagos Islands, which were largely unknown until Charles Darwin's visit, were hit hard by invasive species. Two species of Galapagos mice disappeared, as well as the Galapagos Islands giant rat. Unfortunately, no one even encountered this animal, and it is only known from its remains. But rodents definitely weren't the only animals to go extinct in the Galapagos. Darwin's ground finch, a species fundamental to the discovery of evolution, was only ever seen in 1835. Other species wiped out include the San Cristobal flycatcher and giant tortoises from Santa Fe, Floriana, and Pinta Island. Despite South America's abundance of bats, only one extinct species is known, the giant vampire bat. This species, like modern vampire bats, fed on the blood of animals and specialized in the continent's megafauna. So as you'd expect, the bat went extinct along with its food source. When you think of ungulates, you probably picture the two modern orders, odd-toed and even-toed ungulates. But there's actually a third group, known as the South American native ungulates. These mysterious and ancient animals evolved shortly after the dinosaurs went extinct, and have the most debated evolutionary history of any group of mammals. Some scientists think they belong to Laurasia theria, whilst others think they belong to Atlanta genata. Still, Others argue that the native ungulates might not actually be related to each other at all. What we do know is that these native ungulates became rarer and rarer as North American species spread into South America. By the time humans arrived, only three species survived. Toxodon and two kinds of litopterns, each weighing about a ton, being rather large and defenseless like the ground sloths. They would have made for very easy targets and were soon hunted to extinction. But it wasn't just South American native ungulates that were wiped out by people. Many odd and even toed ungulates were also brought to extinction. The overkill of large mammals is well known, but not turtles. Just this year in 2024, a jaw of a large turtle with an estimated length of 1.7 meters was found in a gold mine deep in the Amazon rainforest. This jawbone is much more important than you could ever guess. In rainforests, fossilization rarely takes place, so we aren't left with many clues about what its ecosystem was like in the past. Its close relative, the big-headed Amazon river turtle, is still alive today. With its much smaller size, it was both harder to hunt and less valuable. Only a few birds actually disappeared during the Quaternary extinction, at least in South America, those being the asphalt stork, the fighting shell duck, and two kinds of vultures. But most of South America's extinct birds have disappeared in just the last 100 years, and since there are so many, I will just briefly mention each. Latita's thornbill, the Antiochia brown banded antpitter, the Peruvian rail, the Bogota sun angel, the Cayenne nightjar, the Eskimo curlew, the Sinu parakeet, Nicephoros pintail, the turquoise throated puffleg, the Colombian grebe, the Alagoas curassow, Spix's macaw, the Glaucus macaw, the Pernambuco pygmy owl, the cryptic tree hunter, and the Alagoas foliage gleaner. Pretty much all of these are a victim of habitat loss. Luckily, two of them were brought into captivity, saving them from complete extinction. Amphibians have experienced the greatest number of extinctions, with 118 listed as possibly extinct, and three confirmed extinctions in South America. In Venezuela, the Maracay harlequin frog once lived in the humid forest along the coastal range. However, the frog was last seen when its habitat was cleared for cattle grazing. Habitat destruction also led to the extinction of the Campo Grande tree frog in 1963, and the spiny knee leaf frog in the 1950s but pretty much all of the possibly extinct species disappeared due to the chytrid fungus. The cloud forest of the Andes and the Atlantic forest is where most of the damage has been done, and of these 118 frogs, a ridiculous 37 are from the genus Atelopus, also known as harlequin frogs. Luckily for them, 37 once thought extinct have been rediscovered, including the sad harlequin frog, the starry night toad, the long-nosed harlequin toad, the variable harlequin toad, and the Venezuelan yellow frog, so we can only hope that more and more of them will be rediscovered in the future.